When I step beyond my carnality, I can tap into a realm that produces things that I can't see with my natural eye. And when we are salt and light in the earth, then we give people an opportunity to tap into something beyond their carnality that they can't see with their natural eye and they get access to the mm, kingdom. That's it. Welcome to episode 70 of Saturday Conversation. If you watch on YouTube, do me a favor. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a video. And to my Spotify and Apple Podcast family, hit the follow button and rate this podcast five stars. I know you're probably wondering, where have I been? If you didn't know, I'm in um, residency and my schedule just got so busy that I wasn't able to be consistent this year with Saturday Conversation. But honestly, I want to thank y'all for supporting me, even though I was not uploading this past year. But with all that being said, I have to say for the last time in 2023, happy Saturday. I can't wait for y'all to hear the conversation I just had with Pastors Trey and Keish about being sought and light in this world. Without further ado, please tell me, welcome to the conversation, Pastors Trey and Keej Elliott. Hey, what's up? What's up? Hey. <laughs> so, so I'm um, excited to finally meet you. Well, not in person, but virtually. I've seen so much of your work ministry-wise um, on Instagram, so I'm just glad that we're able to have this conversation. Um, but before we get into the conversation, do you mind introducing yourself to people who don't know you? Yes, well, I'm Pastor Trey. And I'm Pastor Keej. And we are from uh, Florida, but we, we've we lived in a lot of different places over the past yes. past couple of years. Yes, but we currently reside in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Yes. And we are in love with yeah. this city so far. Yeah. We've only lived here for a few months, but we're enjoying our time on the East Coast. Uh, we are pastors. Mm -hmm. My husband, Trey, is a missions mobilizer. I am lead a life as a graphic designer during the day, as well as other marketing efforts. So we just kind of got, oh, he's also a Big fashion pot. designer. Big yes, pot. we have, yes. you know, we just, we all mixed <laughs> in. Um, but if there's anything I could say above all things is that we love Jesus and Jesus loves us. And so <laughs> <laughs> more than anything, that's who we are. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. All I heard was is kingdom, kingdom, kingdom. That's all I heard when you the kingdom, kingdom, kingdom. I'm kingdom in the graphic design space, kingdom in the fashion space, kingdom in North Carolina, kingdom in Florida, kingdom in Tulsa. I just love to see that this kingdom all over. Because <laughs> the Bible says his kingdom come, and he's the only way that's gonna happen is through us, his body, right? So I'm just blessed to see what y'all doing. Like um we were talking beforehand, y'all were based in Tulsa, originally from Florida, but now you're in North Carolina. And I know following you online, I know you only make moves when God tell you to make moves. So I know this, your move was a God and faith move. So I'm just excited to see what God is going to do in North Carolina through y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we're excited, we're excited as well. <laughs> it's only the beginning. The only, literally only. the beginning. We don't know. <laughs> awesome. we, just, we just stepped out the, off the boat. We don't even know. We just <laughs> fresh off the boat. <laughs> That's amazing. And I'm so excited to have this conversation with y'all. Y'all just dropped a song called Salt and Light. So I'm excited yeah. to have this conversation titled Being the Salt and Light. So what yeah. I realized, Pastor Trey and Keej, is as believers, God has called us to be salt and light. He has called us to bring flavor to the world. Because we all know food without salt, it doesn't taste good. So we're supposed to bring the flavor to the world. He has called us to light up the darkness in the world. He has called us um, from his darkness to his marvelous light for such a time as this. Right now, the world is looking for joy. The world is looking for hope. The world is looking for love. And I believe that we can give the world what they're looking for when we decide to be the body of Christ, which is to be sought and light to the world. Matthew chapter 5, verse 
verse 13 to 16 says, you are the salt of the earth. But what good is salt if it lost its flavor? Can you make a salty again? It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then put it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly father. So sometimes people think that we're just doing this to, to give us the glory. But Jesus says, like, when we do the good deeds, God is going to take all the honor, glory and praise. So I'm just glad, like I said, to have this conversation with y'all. I'm excited. So my first question to you is, how was y'all's upbringing? Because everything has a beginning. So I just want to know your upbringing. So how was y'all's upbringing? Oh, okay. I'll just go first. Um, because the bottom line is that neither of us technically grew up in church. Um, we both had different experiences in church, you know, as we were growing up. You know, you go to a family friend's house or, you know, maybe someone that you're close to or um or that is in your family in a season goes to church consistently. But for the both of us well, growing up share, share from your perspective. What would you love? I know, but I wanted to start with that upbringing? being the basis, okay? <laughs> Foundation. Um, yeah, but, but that... <laughs> she, said, she said, two has become one. Your well, upbringing is my upbringing. Well, and my upbringing yeah. is your upbringing. It's ours, okay? Um, no, but yeah, so that was that was kind of both of our foundation coming up is we knew of Jesus, we mm. knew of God, we understood the passion of the Christ, you know, but we didn't really know very much beyond that. And myself personally, um, when I was growing up, I had two goals. Okay. And you know what I was thinking the other day, I thank God, I still kept them goals. Okay. Mm -hmm. My first two goals ever were to not be a baby mama and to not be poor. And in the kingdom, ain't nobody poor, first of all. And then on top of that, I'm not a baby mama. I'm married and we on our way to having kids. Amen. Amen. <laughs> um, but those, those were my, that was my, my perspective about life. That was, that was the peak of what I wanted to accomplish at a certain point in my life. And, um, as I grew older and graduated high school and went on to college, um, not really having a strong parental foundation in my life because my mom was a single mom. And that was how I knew I didn't want to be that when I got to college, I was practically a grown up already because I was the oldest. So I was always making decisions, always being responsible. So I was the Lord over my own life. And every decision that I made, I knew what was best for me. I knew what was everything. And um, unfortunately, that led me down a very dark path. Okay. That's why Proverbs 3 says, don't lean on your own understanding because you don't know. James says, don't say what you're going to do because only God knows what you're going to do tomorrow. And um, but at that time, I didn't know any of that. I had no recollection of the Bible. And so I, I put all my trust in my own understanding and it led me into some very, very dark places, including uh, prostitution and even uh, eventually, unfortunately, into sexual slavery. But the Lord came and got me. And ever since 2017. We've been rocking this thing out. And um, yeah, that's like a very like, because I don't want to, I can very easily overtake it off. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, uh, I love I love that. And even for, for, my, for me, my upbringing, you know, I grew up in a uh, single mother household, but because my dad was in and out, in and out of jail. So it was just my mom and I uh, up until about sixth grade. Um, and when my dad did get out, um, I mean, he was an amazing father. He did his best. Um, but as far as having God in my life, the only thing I really remember about my upbringing and having, you know, Christ in my life, it was, you know, going to church on Sundays, but never seeing the relationship part at home. So I would go to church, but then when I come home, there's, there's nothing being, um, there's nothing being, uh, shown of what we are learning applied at home. And um, so I, 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 at a young age, I had a very perverse view of Christ. You know, um, only time I really knew about uh, Jesus was just through worship music. Um, I always been a person that was just into music, into worship. So the only time I really felt alive, even at church, was when worship was going on. Um, other than that, I was very uh, displaced from 
from Christ. I believe that uh, that's because just in my upbringing, I dealt with a lot of just uh, molestation and incest in my family, um, a lot of uh, verbal abuse. I've seen a lot of domestic violence uh, growing up. So that really gave me a distorted view of Christ. Why? Because Christ is a man. So any man in my life that I came in contact with, I realized um, they either going to hurt me or uh, abuse or whatever. So I was, I became very just closed off. And, um, so that was just my upbringing, but I always had like these, it was, I've always been such a very creative, uh, person with big dreams, love fashion, love music, love, um, anything creative, fashion, art, music, you name it, uh, acting. I love poetry. I loved it. And <laughs> All those different things, and uh, but unfortunately, those things were ridiculed as, as I was growing up. I was bullied a lot for being into the arts, being into the creative side. Um, that wasn't a manly uh, choice to do growing up. So it was a lot of um, a lot of trauma, a lot of a lot of different um, pain that I went through as as a kid, and that ultimate ultimately that molestation and that pain um, began to uh, come against my identity. I began to struggle with homosexuality. I began to struggle with addiction and drug addiction, X, Y, and Z. And um, like he said, God, uh, 2018, January 7, 2018, coming up on six years, um, God came and grabbed me and healed, healed me and, and showed me just all the pain and everything that I've been through that he was there to heal and to clean me up. And so that's pretty much what was my upbringing. I mean, it was, I had a big family, a lot, you know, we were close, close knit, but there was a lot of fear in my family. So everything was surrounded around fear. It was surrounded by just a lot of the pains from the from the previous generations that never got healed and never got uh, dealt with. So it, it it passed down to my generation very strongly. Mm -hmm. um, and I realized that I didn't want to continue to um, to do that. And one thing that I always one of my goals was always I wanted to impact the world. I didn't know how I was going to do it, but I said, I people ask me what you want to do when you grow up. I want to impact the world um, through arts, through creativity, through some way I want to be able to give back and love and, and love people and change the world. I didn't know what I was saying back then, but I realize now that I get to be the salt and light into the earth. So that's how our, uh, that's, that was a little summary of our upbringing. I think you didn't know what you were saying, but I think the Holy Spirit was speaking through you even before you even knew the Holy Spirit was the person. <laughs> you know what I mean? And yeah. I just love how God shaped your story the way he did it must have it must have been awful it must have been bad but god showed his faithfulness through every cycle of your life and the reason i appreciate y'all so much and i love the hoodies y'all have y'all have on is i see y'all breaking generational curses generational cycles i think god's going to use y'all to to go back to your family and deliver your family from the bondages from the slavery just like how he used moses in the book of exodus yeah that's why I, i'm believing god is going to do that through y'all so yeah. I'm just excited um, once again to have this conversation. I'm excited for what God is doing through y'all because it's not common because, you know, you said both y'all didn't raise up. Y'all weren't raised in, a, in the church. Usually it's like succession. Well, my dad was a pastor. My granddad was a pastor. Now I'm a pastor. Like, no, I met Jesus. He called me. He anointed me. And now we here. <laughs> so, I just love, so I just love to see that. So my next question is, because they were like, this beautiful couple, yeah, you know, they had a, a messed up past, but God redeemed it. But how did they meet? How did how did they collide? How did they, like, why did, how did the devil make a mistake making y'all a, a couple? You know, that's, so how did y'all meet? That's such a good question. You know, even in the, in the grand scheme of, see, this is why, and this is revelation from the Lord right now, downloading in me right now. What's so beautiful, <laughs> what's so beautiful about, you know, what the enemy tried to do in me growing up and even, even in Keech, but, the creativity, the art, everything I was bullied for, you know, there was something in me that said, I like, this is just who I am. I love modeling. I love acting. I love all those different things. And we actually met. Um, we both tried out for a modeling troupe in Orlando, Florida called Faces. And that's how we met um, through creativity, through arts, through fashion, which is amazing that I didn't allow because I don't allow the ridiculers or the, the those who bullied me yeah. to stop me from engaging in what uh guy called me to do, um, we wouldn't have met. So we met in Orlando, was that twelve years ago now? Um eleven. Left, eleven years. We met twenty twelve. Yeah. So uh, so yeah, about Yeah. It'll be twelve years. It'll be twelve next years August, next August. But, yeah. And um and I actually was on track to graduate the year after mm -hmm. him. And if I had graduated 
at my original graduation day, I would have missed him. Yep. Because he had moved from Orlando but within um he was there was for a, a year. year. Yeah. So if I had graduated a year in the year I was supposed to, yeah. he would have been gone by the time I got there. But mm -hmm. um I just had this strong desire. I was ready to be done. Okay. <laughs> With high school, I was ready to be a grown up. Wow. Amen. Like a full grown up. Mm -hmm. Um and so I skipped the eleventh grade online. Um because she's smart. I, I am very smart. The <laughs> Lord has given me the gift of knowledge and wisdom and all those things um but yeah so i took classes in my 10th grade year at night online to skip my 11th grade year so when i came back i came back a senior and i graduated and i went straight off to college and that is where we met and um of course neither of us knew christ at that time either so we bonded we through, yeah <laughs> we bonded through partying and mm -hmm. hanging out and smoking and, and, and I, I became like a big brother like at these parties looking out for her yeah and we eventually became like best friends yeah for seven years um it was crazy even even how i how i even got like you said there was a pool for you to help and graduate and there was a pool for me once i graduated to get out of my my pit my, my mom's house my dad had just passed away my senior year and I was just going, I was just, I was done with family. I was doing everything. I was like, I'm getting out of here. That's the community college that's five hours, four hours away. I'm going. So like the fact that we thought we was running away to hurt and grow up X, Y, and Z and God allowed us to work right to each other at the same time. And we were able to be in friendship, first friendship, then best friends for seven years, but no yeah. idea, no Not idea. It. We, Not there was no attraction. That was my little sister who got on my nerves at a time, you know. Consistently just none. None. We had none. none. We had zero. You know, I knew she was beautiful. And obviously yeah. she knew I was handsome, you know. But it wasn't <laughs> but it wasn't it wasn't like that. Yeah. And in our friend groups, he yeah. was always with like Somebody one of my else. friends. Yeah. Or like friend. another yeah. girl that was in the group. So yeah. it was, you know, G code. Like yeah. it wasn't like that between us. Yeah, but at um, all. But yeah. then to um and but I was working um, I used to do live in uh, nursing and I was spending time with the Lord and the Lord, I was just, just, you know, you know, you used to be journaling, you used to be journaling, just doing your thing. And the Lord just say something. He was like, that's your wife. And I was like, what? And I just, I just wrote it. And I just literally, it was so weird. It's like, God told me, I don't know if he put like the, the blinders up after he told me, but I forgot all about it after he uh, said that. And then I, I went off to college at, um, I, you know, I started all the way over because this time I know the Lord. Now I'm going to college. <laughs> and I'm doing right. But I went to Oral Roberts University, moved to Tulsa. That's how I got to Tulsa. And then Keej, um, she came to visit me for my birthday. We still were best friends. Um, and yeah, I, I, I was like, you all the way out now, Oklahoma. You know, we from Florida. We don't know nothing about no Oklahoma. Right. Like, he from Miami. I'm from Jacksonville. We from big cities. Like, you in this little city right. with these people. And we only been saved so long at this point. Yeah. So, we still had a little ratchet in <laughs> us. And I'm like, who is these people? Let me come check them out. You feel me? Yeah. And so, I came yeah. to visit. And I, uh, I think a week into my trip. Um, the Lord was like, you're going to stay here. And I was like, what? And he was like, yeah, this is where you're going to live. And then um, after that, I, I just I stayed. Six months later is when he told me you're supposed to be my wife. Yep. And then six months after that, we got married. The six months? Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I told you in September. Yes. And then we got engaged in January and then we were married by March. Yeah. I got six, the time. Six months. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then that's the short version, but that's pretty much, that's just pretty much how, how it went. We didn't have, we, because we didn't have attraction when I told her, um, but God had been working on our hearts. God had been speaking through our spiritual parents um, before they became our spiritual parents, right? Or they were, no. they were the spiritual parents at that time. Yeah. Um, speaking through, through them, speaking to another trusted uh Prophetic, prophetic voice. voice in our life and but we was like and eh, nah this is my sister da, da, da. but i knew in my heart that I god had spoken <laughs> and then we finally talked about it and then we didn't know what to do so we prayed our prayer we said lord you know this is what you call us to do this is what you this is what you this is your will you know give us the attraction i always laugh because as i drove home i it just like poof like this attraction i'm like boo crying like driving like oh jesus and then hers came the next day yeah i was still thug misses my yeah just the day but here we are, we're about to celebrate four four years in March. Um, yeah, so that's that's our story, how we got together. Congratulations, but I don't know, someone is lying. Because anytime 
a girl and a guy, a, a girl and a guy are close proximity. Someone likes someone. So none. Seven years, nothing. I guarantee that was you. that was in in in. I was also so I I got married at a very young age. This yes, is actually my second. Me. Yeah, this is my second marriage. So I got married at like twenty one. Um, came into it just with a lot of brokenness, a lot of healing. Just and she was not the one that got half of me. But when you're when you're moving and sinning, you just you just you lean on to your own understanding. You end up in places and things that got prematurely. And um, so that's how much we we were not. We were, that was my sister. Like, like like we were literally him and his wife at this time. I was still living in Orlando, and we were all at the same time talking about moving to Atlanta together. Yeah, him yeah. and his wife and yeah. I all went to Atlanta, stayed in the same hotel room, yeah. and everything. Now they wasn't friends or anything like that. Yeah, so we I'm weren't like, like besties yeah. or like I knew of her because of our friendship yeah. because they were friends. From like middle school or something like that, they middle had known each school. other. So I knew of her, and she would come up when we were in college together and all that kind of stuff. But I'm just I'm painting that picture because so, like that's how far we were mm-hmm. not attracted to one another. Like I was literally about to move in with him and his. Like we were about to all get an apartment together, him and his wife. Yeah. So. Yeah. Fun fact. If that's your story, <laughs> I guess y'all can stick to it. But uh, <laughs> y'all are y'all are the exception and not the rule. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's amazing! Thank y'all for sharing how y'all met. It's every time, like every time you tell a story, I can just see God's faithfulness through every story. Like how you should have graduated early, but you didn't graduate early, and how that's everything. It's just is wild to me how good God is, <laughs> and like when we don't even deserve it, like God is still good. Like God knew that y'all need each other to be kingdom partners to push the calling he's placed on both of your lives. So he's like, I'm going to shut this door. What's crazy? Because when we think God shut the door, we think it's a punishment. Nah, it's just part of the promise. So people just need to realize that don't, don't get all upset with God because he shut the door. That's a blessing. Yeah. And then also like what you said, Pastor Trey, about how um, you don't listen to the criticism. Some people lo- miss their calling because they're too, too busy listening to the criticism. So I love how you didn't miss the criticism because if you listened to the criticism, you would have never met Pastor Cage. So, hey, <laughs> so to listen to what they say and be in sports and play football, play basketball, do it, and I could I would have missed I would have totally missed it. Yeah, because I wouldn't go on. Yeah. <laughs> See, she already told you what she wanted. She that's not one of them. She she's not sports. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank y'all so much for sharing your story. So my next question is. What does it mean to be sought in light? That can go any way, um, but I just want to know uh, from your perspective, what does it mean to be sought in light in this world? Yeah, um, for me, I won't even say for me, what Mm. I believe God wants in terms of that is Mm. for us to stand out, Mm. like just period. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, And you read... Matthew 5, that's under the Sermon on the Mount. You read it from that translation, but in the message translation, which is one of my favorites, um, I can't teach from it, but I just like reading it. It says that we are to be salt, bringing out the God flavors of the world and to be light, bringing out the God colors of this world. And it's it says, if you know how you can put something dull next to something bright like in terms of and i'm a graphic designer so clearly maybe i just see it like that in my head right like if i put a pale orange next to like a bright popping orange i'm like oh that's like i can clearly see which one is better and the reason god needs for us to be that in the mm-hmm. world is because when sin came in as a blood disease and we all inherited mm-hmm. it we no longer could see that the bright orange was bright now the doll looks bright to us. You better teach. Sin has, <laughs> because sin has skewed our mind. That's mm-hmm. why we must be transformed mm-hmm. by the renewing of our mind. Because for so long, sin had us look at right as wrong mm-hmm. and as wrong as right. Mm-hmm. And so, it people, it's hard for them to even be awakened to the perspective that the orange that they're perceiving is dull until they see the bright orange Mm -hmm. and we are to go out and to be that bright orange Mm -hmm. in people's lives orange is also my favorite color and then i think also um to the tune of of people realizing 
like what you said, God's faithfulness throughout different things. When it <clears throat> when the translation says bringing out the God colors or bringing out the God taste, it's it's that. Like you said, people don't know how to even experience or interact with God because they don't know what to look for mm -hmm. in him, especially if they don't read his word. They don't know yeah. his characteristics. They don't mm -hmm. know who he is. And so when we show up, I think it's Proverbs that says bind faithfulness and loyalty around your neck. When mm -hmm. we show up as faithful and as loyal People that are in the world that are used to people being grimy, being nasty, being two faced, they look at that and they're like, well, how do you have the the gall to be that? And it's us bringing out the God color mm -hmm. of his character for them to actually be able to see. That's really good. And even when you were saying that, I was we see plainly is of God removing the scales also in the eyes in Acts chapter 9 and yeah. Saul. Saul, had he thought what he was doing was right. He had this so very good. perverse view of what it looks like to do right in the earth. Yeah. And what the Lord did was remove those scales off his eyes. I and mean, he did what happened. He was able to see and God was able to commission him to be the salt and light in the earth. If you see him just just be that and throughout, you know, throughout the scripture. And I think that's such a beautiful, when you were talking, I was reminded by that. It was like, yeah, we once had blind, we, bo we both had, uh, we once had a perverse view of how we're supposed to see things. But when Jesus came in, yeah. our, our eyesight, everything's supposed to change and supposed to shift. And unfortunately, some people um, still are walking with those blinders on, but we get to be the salt and the light. We get to be set apart and be holy and show them the way, show them what it means to, um, bring flavor to something, to bring something back to life. Um, because nobody wants a bland meal. But when you add some seasoning, you add some spices to it, what happens? It comes alive. It's like, oh my God. And you then, want then you more. want more. That's what, you know what I'm saying? You, you want, want more. more. So You're not yeah. going back to no nasty restaurant. If it's <laughs> that, you're not going back. You're yeah. just not. Um, so, and I think I'll say one more thing to that as well. The purpose of it is that that's why uh, faith is the evidence of things hoped for and the substance of things not seen. Jesus said when he was talking to the man, he said, I have not seen faith like this in all of Israel. What he what that man grasped was the concept of the kingdom that he was able to put into action. And when we are salt and light in the world, people see the reality of the kingdom come mm -hmm. to life. And then they realize that their faith, even though they can't see it with their mm -hmm. natural eye, has the ability to produce something mm -hmm. that is actually around them. When they step That's out, good. when they wake, when they take the opportunity and a lot of, you know, the witches and the spiritualists, they're getting into this, right? That's why they're doing the manifestation. They're doing all these things because they're understanding when I step beyond my carnality, I can tap into a realm that produces things that I can't see with my natural eye and when we are salt and light in the earth then we give people an opportunity to tap into something beyond their carnality that they can't see with their natural eye and they get access to the mm, kingdom that's it Ooh, that is that is so good if, it, also if you look at it if the light part we're supposed to shine light so people are spiritually blind mm -hmm. they're in spiritual darkness so when we shine a light like what you were saying pastor Keej, if we shine that light now they can see that they're actually worth something. They can actually see that they're loved by the Father. They can actually see that Jesus came down and died for their sins. Because sometimes when we get burdened and down with our stuff, we only see our stuff. We don't see past our stuff. But as we go in and be the light to them, then people will start to say like, okay, maybe I don't know this Jesus, but I know yeah. a guy named Trey. He loves me where I'm at. <laughs> so <laughs> I know a, a lady named uh, Keej. She, lo she loves me where I'm at. And when yeah. they start to see yeah. your love, and then they start to have the love of Jesus because of your love. Because some yeah. people think that Jesus is going to come down on his throne and show love to people. No, he's he sitting at the right hand of the Father. He's going to show love through yes. us. That's yes. why he said that we are the light. Yeah. We are the salt of the, of the earth. And if you look at the biblical time, they also use salt to preserve meat because yeah. they didn't have fridges. Yeah. So I think it's our call to preserve people. People going through depression, people going through suicidal ideation, people who have the shame and guilt and condemnation of their past. It's our job to preserve them. Like, no, don't don't do that. Don't take your life. Hey, mm -hmm. don't don't give into the anxiety. Hey, don't give into the the guilt and the shame that the devil is um putting you through. Just know that you're loved. God mm -hmm. forgives you. God loves you, and God wants the best for you. But if we choose not to be the salt and light, 
that I think we're doing Jesus a, a disservice. Yep, yep. And even even if I could just add one more thing, because just like you said, we're doing Jesus Jesus a disservice, and it was very. Um, Jesus was very uh, strategic when he said salt and light, especially with light. Light is the fastest moving thing in, in ever. It, nothing is faster than light. So the fact that he 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 uses us and says, "I want you guys to be the light." We, if we're supposed to be making disciples of all nations. We're supposed to be reflecting that light and moving at, at a speed of light as as what God's called us to do. But unfortunately, we have we have we don't see that. We don't see. The disciples uh been made of all nations. We don't see us actually operating and being sought in light as a body of Christ. And let me tell you why. We're flowing now. Let me tell you why. Because you said we have to move as as the speed of light. It's because we don't move at the speed of light when it comes to obeying God. Yeah. When God tells us to move, we start to ask everybody. We start to think about it. We start to like, should we do it? Should we not? I see the pros. I see the cons. Yeah. I keep looking at the cons. And we yeah. just keep having this list. Even though God told us to move two years ago, we still do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? So if we moved at the speed of light when it came to obeying God, then I think we'll be okay. But don't forget when Saul was supposed to, uh, King Saul, not uh, Saul who turned into Paul, when he's supposed to kill everyone, he mm -hmm. said, I kept some things because, you know, the people were pressuring me. And then Samuel said, rebellion is like to is like unto witchcraft. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? So some people say, like, I'm not part of this witchcraft. If you disobey God, God equates disobedience to him to witchcraft. Yeah. So so many people want to call out witchcraft. Check your life. <laughs> have you been disobedient to God in the past month? Because if you have, he equates the same thing as witchcraft. That's good. This is so good. And that's why even um, I, I get choked up every time in Hebrews, it talks about, it says something, 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 and that evil unbelief, it, it, dis, it discusses that unbelief is even evil. So in our hesitation, there's this um, rebellion, which is this witchcraft, but then there's also this unbelief because most of us are hesitating, not because we don't think that it's possible but we don't really believe that god can do it. we don't trust him right. enough that he would do it and even that is evil and yes. so it it i'm all, every time i read that in hebrews i'm called into repentance for every single thing that the lord has said to me or that i have you know um bill johnson always says he says that it's not um wisdom to um to relay religious rhetoric just in case God doesn't come through, you know, like people will pray a prayer. And then on the other hand, they'll say something like, well, you know, if God willing, like he willing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If it's, if it's not God's will, I'll be okay. Well, then, uh... <laughs> well, well, does he want your soul to be as healthy and prosperous as, you know, like, like is the Bible, the Bible. And so it's, it's, but it's, it's our ability to, to, to live in unbelief in this limbo that God calls evil and we yeah. do it every day. And I don't want everybody listening like, oh, we just got it on lock. I, I speak for myself. I don't got it on lock. So no. I still have my head because no. it's back to like, how do I rectify this logically? Yeah. <laughs> you know, y'all probably went through it when y'all moved from Tulsa to North Carolina. Like, does this make sense? We got roots here. We start a ministry here. Does it make sense? And then God told y'all to go. I don't know how long it took God to actually say, yes, we're going to go, but at least y'all went. <laughs> but, you know, it's like sometimes we are, we're human. We, God put us in this humanity flesh. And then sometimes we have to count the cost and think about it, like, should we do it? But back to what you said, Pastor Keys is like, in Hebrews, it says it's impossible to please God without faith. If we don't have the faith, what are we really believing in? Because yeah. if we have faith that, our savior was born of a virgin, which makes no sense logically. We have faith that on the third day, after going through a horrible death, that Jesus rose again from the dead. We have faith in that. Why don't we think we have faith that God's going to use you to break generational curses? Why don't we have the faith that God's going to um, use you to build um, build generational wealth? Why don't we have this belief that we believe in a savior who decided to come down, die, and on the third day was um, raised from the dead? If we can believe in that, I think Every, that the part was the hardest thing. If God can do that, what can't God do? Yeah, literally. And even to add to that, since we in the Hebrews Hall of Fame, he says, um, Abraham mm -hmm. counted not his own body. Mm -hmm. Like it literally says Abraham looked 
at how horrible his situation was and still decided that he was going to trust God. And that was what was counted to him as righteousness. And, and so I think oftentimes when God gives us, because here's the thing, like you, you prayed this, uh, when we first started, um, in Colossians, it says that everything that we do be worship unto the Lord. And, um, when we really realize I've, I've been telling Trey over this past few months, the Lord has been working through my soul with the concept of like, everything I do is priestly work. Like, everything is priestly just as the priests had jobs had um you know lists of duties and different things like that if everything that i do is worship unto him everything is priestly so it takes out this sting of like oh if it doesn't work then this or if it might not happen then that it takes i've literally had to continuously rip myself out of that reality of if it doesn't, because of exactly what you said, if Abraham looked at what he had and said, we, we be looking at situations and it costs X amount of dollars and we got five dollars. At least we got a little bit of money. Abraham had no opportunity. OK, <laughs> Sarah's all her eggs was straight dead and he had no soldiers. So it's not even like he had anything <laughs> to work with. Yet he still decided that he was going to believe God. And who are we to step away from the father of our faith and or step away from the, the lifestyle and the momentum of the father of our faith and not just being salt, being light, stepping up, being different, doing something, not looking like the world and deciding that we're going to exude the kingdom everywhere we go and everything we say. So let me see that. I, 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 take a <laughs> I, I love how you talked about everything we do is priestly because some people still have their mind that women can't preach, women can't, hey, 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 hey. show me the Bible in context. But the reason I say that is because in the book of Peter, it says that we are a royal priesthood. A chosen generation. Yeah. So, so to because some people are like you said that let me get some Bible for it. I'm I'm supporting my sister. Here's the Bible. The Bible says we are a royal priesthood, which yes. means we are a son or daughter of the king, and we have priestly duties to do. <laughs> so I love how you said that everything's priestly. And if you look in the book of Leviticus and Exodus and Numbers, when it comes to priestly duties, everything has to be detailed, detail oriented. Because some people think is like, hey. Since I'm doing it for God, I don't got to do my best. That's a lie. If you're going to do your best for your boss, why won't you do your best for your creator? Mm. And I think people, we just got to change our mind. If And that's another thing. Is like, if we're going to be sought in light, let us be sought in light in our workplace. Don't do the bare minimum at work. Because they're going to make them, Christian look back, oh, all they know how to do is pray. No, I know how to pray, but I do also know how to work hard. I know how to be efficient. I know how to get the stuff done. I know how to meet deadlines and things like that. But until we start to realize this as Christians, like, yes, our salvation is secured or we're going to go to heaven once we pass away. But let us leave a legacy down here since we are salt and light of the world. That's good. That's so good. Yeah. Anything else? Pastor Trey, you want to say something? We're just flowing right now. You know, I'm ready for I Because I feel like what I'm going to say is going to go into your next question. So I'm just going to wait for the next question. Okay. Next question is how <laughs> practical ways we can be salt and light in the world. Take it away, Pastor Trey. Well, how, you said the question is how practical ways. Practical ways, mm -hmm. practical I mean, ways yes. Definitely spending time with the Lord. Um, definitely being in your prayer closet. Definitely uh, fasting, consecrating yourself. I mean, because you have to do that in order to be a pure vessel for the Lord to use you. Why I say that is because a lot of times people rush out to be sought and light. They're not equipped. They don't have the spiritual stamina or the physical stamina or the emotional stamina. So just the, the, the basics, which is a beautiful foundation, is prayer. It is being in community. It is, um, you know, being in discipleship. You cannot be sought and light without being in discipleship. Jesus chose 12 disciples. They weren't able to go out two by two to spread the gospel, to be the salt and light, unless they were submitted under discipleship. So I think that is the, that is, that is, those are the key components of being salt and light. And you have to be bold. You have to be bold. You have to be brave and courageous. Um, you got to be willing to step out. You got to be willing to go to those dark places that a lot of people don't want to go to. You have to be willing to say, you know what, today I'm going to, like when the Holy Spirit speaks to you and say, hey, pay for that person's um, 
groceries or pay for that person gas or go up to that homeless person that may be smoking weed, that may be drinking right now or whatever. Like you have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable at all times. And I think that um, the reason why the salt gold, well, that's that's another question. We don't go there. I ain't go there just yet. But that's what I would say. I would say um, those key components I've seen is what um, I've seen God use us um, in our ministry, but not only in our ministry, but privately, like just with behind closed doors, yeah. um, when we are using you know, using those those tools that I just spoke of. Yeah, um, I would say definitely everything that Trey said. I'm going to second that always, always, always. Um, but I think the two practical ways are number one, getting your soul healed. Yes, and maintaining your soul mm-hmm. because we. There's no fight with the devil, okay? Mm-hmm. It's, it's done. Um, yet, when you don't take the intentionality to get your soul healed, mm-hmm. you leave room for him to come in and um, attack you. It's like a, a bacteria. Yeah, that when you... It's like, okay, if you have um, like a bacteria because you are... What are those people? They say they're predisposed, like, you know, when, when it was COVID going around, it's like, if you had these predisposed diseases, then you were more likely to get COVID, okay? <laughs> Your good. soul not being healed is a predisposed disease to you li- more than likely just getting knocked off the mm. grid um, because it's not that, it, it's not... How do I say when you genuinely have such a a healed soul, it's literally like what um what the enemy came and and accused uh job of like he's the accuser, so whatever it is he can still find in your soul is an accusation, mm-hmm. and he will attack that accusation at all costs and he will cause you temptations and he will cause you all these different things and so i would say the first practical way is staying with your soul healing always always Mm -hmm. always that's why david said search my heart lord that Mm -hmm. you can know whatever it is because he understood that about himself and then um and then secondly i would say is that you actually have to leave your prayer closet. You actually have to leave your church. You actually have to leave. Bible study. You have to step out yeah. because at that point um, is where you can kind of become Pharisaic because that's all the Pharisees did was learn, learn, learn. They read them little scrolls all day, all day, all day. <laughs> so when they saw Jesus in the streets interacting and doing stuff, they like, they call it. Hello, Sabbath. Right. What? They calling you a rabbi, what they were saying to him. I don't see you in the synagogue. I don't see you because they were so used to spending all of their time in, in, in closed doors awaiting the Messiah that they didn't realize that when he came, it was their job to engage with him. And now that the Messiah, their priestly duty. and now that, right. And now that the Messiah has came, revealed himself and now passed the baton onto us, it is up to us to continue to go out just as he did. And so, um, in your going out, you must be making disciples of all nations, Mm -hmm. not making salvations, but making disciples and discipleship is hard work. Okay. Mm -hmm. You are not only Trey talked about you being discipled, but it is your job at some point in time to be healed enough to disciple Mm -hmm. someone else. That's the only way the pot grows. And that's Really, where uh, the the bulk of the church is stuck right now, mm-hmm. I would say at least ninety percent, unfortunately, of the church is stuck where they don't even know how to make a disciple or build a disciple. It's unfortunate, but the 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 build salvations the, right, not even just the build salvations. I wasn't even going to say that, which is amazing. Yeah, which yeah, is great. Right. But that's just the first that's step. The first part. Yeah. The cross, <laughs> the salvation is the, okay. Yeah. Anyways. Um, but, uh, they, they put it all on someone else. So their saltiness and their light doesn't have to stay. It doesn't have to stay geared up. If, mm-hmm. Oh, if I just bring you to church, you're going to hear this good word. My pastor going to get you saved. 
You're going <laughs> to sign up for whatever they got at the church. They should say before they get there. And you should be discipling them. And so I think practically in the earth, like what that looks like is when you go out, that you are building disciples. Like, yes, you should be praying. Yes, you should be all these different things. You should be laying hands. You should be whatever. Mm -hmm. But once the kingdom of heaven has come upon a person, mm -hmm. they are now a citizen. They need to learn how to mag, like they need to learn how to maneuver their citizenship. And so, yeah. <laughs> That's so good. I, I think, uh, because y'all y'all just dropping gems. Y'all just dropping gems. And I think the problem is we can't make disciples because sometimes we're not disciplined. Mm -hmm. And for us to be disciplined, we will have to let go of our past. We have to let go of our sin. We got to let go of our way of doing things. But I think sometimes it's hard to let that stuff go when it's been part of our life for so long. Mm -hmm. So I think, um, I don't know what the point was. The point was, Pastor, you going to say something? You going <laughs> to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, she's oh, okay. while listening she like no that's because here's the here's the here's the crux so i'm gonna just throw it out there okay i think a lot of people have a hard time maneuvering into making disciples and moving beyond that and and fully getting some of the soul healing that they need is because so much of our religious doctrine dogma sunday to sunday activity is based upon beating the devil and overcoming our flesh. So it's like, if I don't have anything else to teach you about after that, mm -hmm. then what do I do? So what they do is they continue to hold on to that and hold on to, okay, I'm, I'm holding on to my anxiety. Okay. Continue to, um, the message translation also says in the sermon on the Mount, like, don't, um, don't listen to people peddling their techniques of how to get close to God that because it doesn't work. And he, that's, the message translation, but y'all know what I'm trying to say. But like, so people have a hard time building disciples because from day to day and week to week, all they're being fed is how they manage their own flesh and their own sin. Mm -hmm. And so they can never ascend to a place to pull someone out of the muck that they are in because, and this is why I don't agree with the doctrine of just, um, everybody's always going through something so horrible. So I'm no better than you. No, if you're still stuck in sin, I have ascended and you have not. And I think there's no, um, what's the word? Um, there's no arrogance in that at all, because I want you to come up where I am. You know, like when Jesus died, he didn't die for us to battle with sin. He died for it to be done and eradicated. And if we don't take people beyond mm. their flesh management, if yeah. we don't take people beyond how to overcome temptation and how to whatever, then the manifestations of the kingdom that God intended when he gifted us with the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. have a heart because all we're doing at that point is just using the Holy Spirit to maintain our flesh and not using the fullness of his power to express the fullness of the Godhead in the earth. And I think if you don't do that, then it's hard to make disciples because what am I giving you that mm -hmm. you, you know what I'm saying? Like, and that's why when we, as, as our disciples, I try mm -hmm. my hardest to make sure that I go before the throne and I'm always, okay, Lord, heal my soul, heal my soul. Because when I come before them, I'm, I'm not hiding anything and they see anything that I may go through. But I always want for them to know that flesh management is not the lifestyle that they were created to live once they gained access into the kingdom. And I try to teach them that ascension at mm -hmm. all costs. Um, and so, yeah. <laughs> Pastor Trey. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I told y'all. Any last you. words, Pastor Trey? No, no. <laughs> no, that's oh, great. Oh, everything she, I mean, we Pastor's like, how do I follow that? I, I, listen, <laughs> everything she say is like, we we, we work, we, we live out, you know? So it's, I'm ready for the next question because I thought the question that was next that I was going to say, it's okay. I'm ready for this question. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay. So, <laughs> so my next question to you, uh, to both of you is... How do we make sure our light doesn't dim and our salt doesn't get bland? That's the question I look for. So um, I think when you, when I was looking at these uh, the questions or just it, just in preparation, I 
I thought about the Lord highlighted this during that while we were talking, but you know, there was scripture that says, Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? He asked him that three times. And I think a lot of times we focus on the fact of like Peter's like, Yeah, you know I love you. Da, 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 da. But what I realized is what makes the salt bland is we have a lack of reverence. I think that God was trying to get Peter to understand that he was missing reverence. Yeah, I know you love you can love God. We can love God, but yet still not operate and being sought in light. We can love God and yet still be bland every single day. And you know what? God still loves us too. And he was asking him, do you love me? Do you love me? And what did he say? Feed my sheep. That is a symbol. That's symbolic for being sought in light, feeding my sheep. So I, what, what the question was, is not how do we lose it? What was the question? I want to make sure I'm saying I'm on the right path. How do we make sure our light doesn't dim and our salt doesn't get bland? Um, reverence. I think that we have the body of Christ has been missing a special ingredient in the salt called special. reverence and being in awe of God. What is reverence? It is it is saying, God, I I I don't I am so afraid of being outside of your will. Name outside your will. I'm so afraid of not having you in my life yes. that like outside of your like, presence. Presence, your, outside of your presence. I can't live without your presence, yes. God. Like like the obedience that we talked about. Like we that every time we disobey God, every time we choose our, our will over um over God's will, every time that we have unbelief, or it, it begins to di- to to uh, dim or or make the salt uh, lose its its taste. And something that that when you were talking, I'm like the Lord's like the special reading that's making things land that people are missing is reverence. Um, yeah. I even I even uh people a lot of times may wonder, like, how did David continue to be a man that God's own heart? Right. Right. But, I, but, uh, he sinned. Everything that was taking place, but somehow he kept this place of reverence. When you look throughout the book of Psalms, he's constantly talking about the fear of the Lord, having the fear of the Lord. And the fear of the Lord is not being terrified or it's not being um, th- this demonic fear. Like, oh, my gosh, I'm so afraid. No, it, it's, it's, it's a respect. It's a yeah. deep awe respect for who God is yeah. because of who he is and because he's the creator of all things. So I think. How do we lose our blend? And it is it, not having the, the reverence, yeah. and and our light begin to get contaminated when we don't get healed, when we when we go through pain, and we don't surrender that to God. Our light becomes dim because if we're supposed to be um, a city set on the hill, that means people are supposed to see us from far away. Yeah. Like we're supposed to be able to to draw people from. That's why I love the concept of a lighthouse. Like you, when you're mm-hmm. out in darkness, wow. when you're out when you're out on the on a boat, and you're like looking like like okay. Where's my safety net? You should be able to see that lighthouse from far away. Wow. And when you when people can't see the light in you, they can't see you from a mile away. That 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 means that you have you have been losing your light. Light your light bulb needs to be be changed out. Um. So yeah, that that's what I would say in that area. Wow. Yeah. Um. Pastor Keys, one one second. I want to interject one second because you brought up David. I I love David, but you look at David and King Saul. You look at David's sin, it seemed like it was more than King Saul. Mm-hmm. But King Saul was like, don't take away the stuff. King David in Psalm 51 says, do not take away your Holy Spirit. Yeah. You see, you see what I'm talking about? Some people will get a platform. God, don't take away your don't take away my platform. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. God, don't take away your Holy Spirit. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I think to uh, echo what you're saying is like people lose that light or their salt get bland because they start thinking about the influence and the platform and yep. they forget about the Holy Spirit. Yep. Exactly. Even, so I just even, love how you said that and I just wanted to correlate it. Yeah, I was going to say even we're thinking about Adam and Eve, right? Because even we can go back because we're talking about salt and being light, right? We see in Adam and Eve how uh, what did he do? He said, you know what? This apple actually would taste a lot better. Mm-hmm. If, you, if you get this apple, now the apple that God already provided for them in the tree in the garden, the, the, the trees and the fruits, like that had the best taste. It was it was everything they needed and more. But somehow the enemy had had um, tricked their tricked their minds, tricked their knowledge, and thinking like you know what, actually there's one special green that you actually need. It's in this apple. You know what I'm saying? And when we begin to say, you know what, I'd rather take from what the world has, the salt that the world has, and and consume the the world of the salt. We begin to to uh, contaminate the original design that we had to be salt and light and anything that contaminates the original design creates a bland, um, mediocre version of what God had in mind. Yeah. Um, my one thing that I would say, I was so good. 
my one thing that I would say, this is my thinking phase, uh, is when we don't keep our minds set on unimaginable eternal significance, you really, I mean. Break that down. I, I don't Unimaginable. Think, Look at that. <laughs> I don't think I, I used to say this, and so I, I had to stop when people say, "Don't be so heavenly minded that you're no earthly good." But heaven is my home, so you know what? I actually, I don't need to be as earthly good as you think I need to be. <laughs> I, if I'm good as far as what heaven is telling me is good, then what I see on this. Earth comes second to that. And um, what I mean by unimaginable eternal significance, you know, the, Paul and um, according to Revelation talks about um, the revelation of John talks about when Jesus comes back, he's going to judge everything we did with the gifts and the time that he gave us and the motives that we did with them. And oftentimes we lose our salt and our light. Um because we don't focus on that moment mm. that that when Jesus comes back and he a lot of Christians don't know that they will be judged mm -hmm. not for their sin because again that was taken care of on the cross but they don't know that they will be judged for every idle word mm -hmm. for every misdeed for every person they led astray for every time they made decisions that impacted the loss of their flavor that impacted the loss of their light every decision that they made they will be judged for it not that they will be kicked out of heaven for mm -hmm. it they will still make it but that mm -hmm. they will not receive the reward or the recompense mm -hmm. as revelation um dictates it they will not receive what they desire and when i'm trying when i teach it i try to explain it to people this way if earth is this much time but heaven and eternity is this much time okay i would rather take some sacrifice here mm -hmm. not be comfortable here not look like the world here, work a little bit harder to be salt and light here, that I can enjoy rewards here. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible says that's that's what the um, store of your treasure in heaven is about. It's not just about your offering. It's about what you think is important. Mm -hmm. And what a lot of people do is they make decisions that dim their light and that take away their flavor because they're not focusing on their unimaginable eternal significance. Mm -hmm. When you get there and you get to say, there's a million people in, in heaven right now because I was salt and light, that is going to last way longer than mm -hmm. maybe you making a a friend you know a little bit uncomfortable by saying hey you know i don't think you should do that that kind of damages your witness or saying like hey you have a cursing problem can we work on this or going around someone mm -hmm. and then you know speaking death over themselves and saying hey you know I'm, you don't have to say that about like these things are things that we get the opportunity to make decisions about every single day and i believe that every time you make a decision that doesn't put out Right. Like what the message says, that doesn't bring out the flavors, the God flavors of the world. And that doesn't bring out the God colors of the world. Um, it's because you're not focusing on your eternal significance mm -hmm. and you're focusing on whatever the grat the gratification of no, the gratification. Yeah. That you may be experiencing or lack thereof right mm -hmm. here in in the carnality of, of time that you're experiencing. Yeah. Uh, that is so good. So I was th when you were talking, I was thinking about First Corinthians chapter three, when Paul was saying, you know, some people will build with um, gold, silver, precious stones, and some people are gonna build with wood and straw. And he said, the stuff it will all be trial by fire. And a person who built with wood and straw would be like a person who just barely escaped the fire. Mm -hmm. So you you just barely got in. But I'm, yeah. I'm on the same wavelength with both of y'all. I want to build with gold silver and precious stone i'm going to give y'all a shout out because y'all did that during thanksgiving weekend when you had a recommitment service that is what you call building with gold silver and precious stones so i just want to give you a shout out give you your flowers in public because some people don't know how much work it took to do that virtually first and foremost it's not like me me here is like let's get all the online stuff working let's make sure that you know we can so we can um communicate clearly and everything like that 
So y'all are deciding to make a decision that I will sacrifice here so I don't build with wood and straw, but I'm going to build with gold, silver, and precious stone. Because there will be that time that it will be trawled by fire. And whatever whatever lasts is what's going to be our reward. But whatever burns up, that's it. You barely got in. You barely escaped the fire. That's so good. That's so good. And that's it. Even, I just want to add a little bit, just one more thing with in this segment um, of the question. You know, even as you guys are talking, I was reminded by that salt and light is personal. It's 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 personal. What I mean by that is when when Saul tried to put David, tried to put his armor on David, it didn't work. David couldn't operate in the fullness that God had for him, right? Mm. It's 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 a personal thing. Yeah. We think about Yorkies. the we think right, Yorkies. Yorkies. We think about the the Matthew Matthew twenty five with the parable of the ten virgins. Their oil was personal. Wow. What they had, it was a personal thing. That God placed inside of them, and when and when you try to try to, and what happened? They said, well, "Give me some of your oil." That was me saying, it was, <laughs> yeah. "So funny." Um, <laughs> but when they try to ask the the verses for their oil, they said, "No, this is my oil. This is it's personal. Yeah, it's personal. No, so your salt and light. It is personal, and it, it, it is it is. Um, God has configured it, and uh, that's the word I want that to use. Is. But He's it's special design for you nobody can wear the armor that god's given to you when you go, when you say when you put on the full armor of god that is, that is your personal salt and light that is yours and I, and I think it gets bland when we try to um use some be somebody else's salt be somebody else's light so it's just really important for us to know that it that but when god calls you to be salt and light it's personal it is for you only you are assigned to do a specific thing in the earth only you that's why we all have different thumbprints you are you have a, a special design to be sought like when you try to use anybody else's thumbprint yeah. to scan and to get into the room or get into the door or whatever it, it becomes bland because it's, wow. it was never yours in the first place wow. so i just think um i was gonna you know you can read matthew so 25 good. talks about the parable of 10 10 virgin and and and, and um in first samuel in David's life, he talks about it, it talks about the part where uh, about him trying to put on uh, Saul's armor. And he was like, I, I can't no, I can't fit this. But what did he so do? Good. His salt and light, his, his personal what was personal for him was his slingshot, because what he did in the past, what he did was he was able to knock knock out, you know, the, the, the lion and the, and the bear, all these different things, because that was that was what God was preparing him to do for a special task. So, yeah, salt and light is personal and when you try to try to compare yourself or to or do anything outside of what god has has called you to do um it becomes bland so yeah so oh, that makes sense uh, no no I, I love that and i love how you also talk about the slingshot and you talk about how he he beat up the bear he beat up the lion and what i realized growing um, with jesus is that God will not give the opportunity to be a bigger salt and bigger light until you're shown to be faithful in the smaller light and the smaller salt. Some mm -hmm. people like, I want this, I want this huge platform. God's like, go disciple those two friends you have. Now you know they're not um, right with God, but you want this this huge following. But let's let's be honest, most of us want the big calling, but we don't want to do the little sacrifices to get yeah. to the big calling. Mm -hmm. So good, so good. Because it's easier to do. It's it's easier to see something. Um, come out of something immediately. Discipling people, you won't receive that reward until later. But if I go and I maybe, you know, grow this platform or grow this whatever, I can see them likes. I can see those follows. I can see all of that right now Um, versus waiting until I get to heaven to figure out, you know, how many people are actually impacted or, you know, whatever. Yeah. So it's that mentality of it's my money and I need it now. <laughs> like it's that mentality. It's like, I, it's, it's my salt. It's my, it ain't yeah. even yours in the first place. And the so salt and light doesn't even belong to you. The, the, what God's equipped you with is not even yours. It belongs to him. And I'm, yeah. I'm not, and I may be, it may be sound like I am, I am talking to you guys who are, who are watching, but I'm also reminding myself of this and I'm reminding us of this. Like it's not even, my salt. It's not even my light in the first place. Like it's Holy Spirit that empowers me to do yeah. what He's called me to do. And when I try to add my own stuff, yeah, the, the pride comes before the fall real quick. We see the difference in that in King Saul and in David's life. Yeah, yeah. David messed up. David was an adulterer. He was a murderer. X, Y, and Z. But he never lost the reverence of God. And I think that that kept that kept his heart. Him being a man after God's own heart. Yeah. So, Amen. That's so good. So my my next question is because we kind of hit on it a little bit by comparing, 
So how we navigate, because Paris is always going to come. That thought of comparison will always come. But how do we navigate comparing like our gifts, our light, our salt to other people's gifts, lights, and salt? Because Pastor Trey, I ain't ever going to be fashionable like you. I I accept it. It's cool. We can still work together in the kingdom, but I'm not, you're going to look fly. I'm going to look okay. So I, I already accepted it. So how do, how do people navigate other people's calling, other people's gifts, um, other people's thoughts and light? How do they navigate the comparison of it? Yeah. Um, well, one, they believe the Bible. Um, and Paul just straight up says he gave some gifts of this, some gifts of that. The toe can't be the head, period. Um, so when you just understand the Bible from that perspective, you keep it at the forefront. Um, but I also believe it's when you really are so secure in your relationship with God. Like a lot of people I'm realizing um, are not secure in their relationship with their heavenly father. Like they may go to church or they may like, you know, whatever, but they don't, I don't know. They really don't. It's like they believe him, but it's like, you know, the bank, right? Like, you know, the bank got money, right? But yet for some odd reason, you don't necessarily believe like that they could give you the money. Like, you know, I don't know if that even makes all the kind of sense I was, it was trying to make in my head. But um, I, I realized that. I think, you're, I think you're trying to say, like, we the bank has money, but do we have money in our account? <laughs> but we have yeah. to realize that God has deposited unto us every spiritual gift, every heavenly gift. We got to realize that. So once we realize that, we don't have to compare ourselves to each other because God has deposited something unique to us. I think that was what you're trying to say, maybe. I, <laughs> Yeah, you know, that was that was pretty much it. I, I, I think I was trying to anyways, but that was <laughs> that was it essentially because what I've realized is and I I um didn't get saved in a church on a Sunday gathering. I got saved um because the Lord literally came and got me while I was still living in Atlanta, while I was still doing and going through everything that I was going through, he came and encountered me. So from that moment and the beauty of um my sanctification unfolding i was able to see the trueness of how much he loved me of how much i could have a relationship with him as me and a lot of believers really don't have that like like full revelation like it's like they know but they don't and i think that that has to be the biggest and most important thing that that you just know who god is and how much he loves you and that may sound taboo but in reality it's the most important thing because if i know how much he loves me and i know that he's a good father I know Jesus is at his right hand talking about me, interceding for me. I know that he gave me these gifts for a reason and I'm supposed to use them. Then my full trust is in the love in our relationship. It's almost as if like now I'm married, right? And so I have a husband and I can't think that my husband would do anything to harm me. Like I have to know that everything that he does is for my good. That's not his heart. That's not his intention because of the nature and the intimacy of our relationship. And as believers, if God gives somebody else something else, we must know that that's not because he doesn't want to give that to us because there's a lack of love for us. It's, it's just, that's just not his nature. And um, it's, it's either because one, we don't need it. Two, we, he can't trust us with it. Um, or three, it's not something that he's called us to. And when you just have that much trust in the father, that like his plan is so perfect. A lot of us still try to think that we know something when we don't know a lick of nothing. Even thinking that, you know, we tell we were telling people before we moved, like, 
we had our next whatever amount of years planned out in Tulsa, you know, talking about what school, you know, if any, we were going to let our kids go to. Child, we was planning our whole life, okay? If I have been planning my life and looking at someone else's life in the grand scheme of the of what it was that I was going through, not knowing that literally six months later, I was going to be living somewhere totally different with people I've never met before. Like we have all of these different things that we think about in our minds that occupy unnecessary space. Comparison is the thief of joy, not just because it um, takes away our, our actual like happiness or maybe the joy, but it's, it's stealing space that could be used for what God actually needs it to be used for. And that is where we get the joy from not just because we just have more joy or we have more happiness but if i'm focusing i I, i've been meditating on this a lot lately and teaching it we only have one gaze so if i i cannot keep my gaze on you and on god at the same time it just does not work so i have to focus my gaze on him on his plan on his purposes, on his functionality, on his everything. And only when that happens, and I fully trust that he loves me so much above anything. He like y'all, but he love me. And I believe that with my whole not plan. But no, he love me a lot, okay? And um, I pray everybody feels that way, but unfortunately some people don't. So they look at what other people have and they believe that they, they are deserving or that God didn't give it to them or that whatever. And, and so it's really more about their relationship with him than it is about whoever that other person is that has something that they think they want. Yeah. I mean, and even, and even you, you may be watching this and just want to just encourage you that like God chose you. Yes, he like, did. He chose you. Yes, he, did. he loves you. You, you are his son. You are his daughter. And I know that it is, it, the life has hit you with so many different things, trials and tribulations. So it makes you feel like you have to compare yourself, you know, compare yourself to, uh, this person had this, or this person had this upbringing, or this person had this relationship, or this person had these gifts, and it's like a never-ending cycle. But all, but I, I, my prayer, because I know that everybody can't just be like, oh, well, it's just going to be a snap of the finger, I'm just going to trust God. I just pray that each and every day that you begin to just take the steps of just trusting God with the little and the more and more and more and more, and, and be and, and so that he can and ask him to teach you how to trust him, teach you, ask him to teach you how to love who he's called you to be yeah. and, 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 and realize that what God has for them is for them. What he has for you, especially for you. He wants to use that. He will use that. But I, my prayer is that you allow him to do that. Um, and, and also, you know, there's a root of that comparison. So, um, until you until you get to that root of why the comparison is there, um, you'll continue to go on the wide road. But God said said to go on that narrow road, go into that narrow path. Um, because everything else is a distraction out there. But when you stay on that narrow path, you're able to keep your eyes focused on the Lord. I believe that's how uh Moses was able to to lead uh millions of people to freedom because he had to stay on the narrow path. It was so easy. He could have went back on the path of of you know what well my well he's a pharaoh he's still X Y Z or they got all this gold they got all this different stuff. Or I used to be here and now I'm now I'm a shepherd or whatever. He could have went back and forth but his gaze when he met when he once he seen that burning bush and I believe there's a burning yeah. bush that God wants you to see even right now. Um that once he saw that burning bush, he said, I can't look no further. When he saw the glory, he saw the holy, the holiness, when he saw who God was. And and, and I believe even the midst, because he began to compare himself. I'm not eloquent in speech. Yeah, I don't have to do it. Right. I don't have X, Y, and Z. He began to compare himself to 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 um to Aaron. But God said, you know what? I'm going to get Aaron, but I still want you to lead. I still want you to lead. Tag me, tag me, tag me. Because I was waiting. I had something to say, but then you said that. And I'm like, I got to say it right now. Because your calling is, is simple. Simple. Occupy and make disciples of all the nations. How you manifest your calling is different mm -hmm. as a person. And it's different along your lifetime. Mm -hmm. Paul went from planting churches to just writing letters. Okay. That didn't mean that he wasn't still a missionary. Then, And then not only was he planting churches, but sometimes he wasn't planting. He was just pastoring. He was staying places for X amount of times. And then he went to just writing and so on and so forth. And so I, I said that to say your current, um, active calling, as I would say, or maybe the active manifestation of your calling is always going to be 
dependent upon your dependence. God cannot give you anything to do that you are not fully dependent upon him because that's where he gets the glory from. Mm -hmm. John 14 through 17, that's all Jesus is talking about. I'm going to do this because God gets the glory from it. Mm -hmm. And I I had to be tagged in when you said something about Moses because Mm -hmm. that's the dependency, right? Moses had already had the... um, the proclivity of the gift of, mm-hmm. of rescuing people. Yeah. That's how he got caught up in the first place. Mm-hmm. Saw his brother jacked up and he done came in and bam, mm-hmm. done bust somebody down because he was a rescuer. Okay, that's how he got in the shepherd. He yeah. saw the little girls when he got to the well. He done messed up their whole thing so the girls could get the water. He was a rest. That was his gift. That was his nature. He already knew about mm-hmm. that. But speaking, yeah. That part of the manifestation of his calling required dependency Mm -hmm. upon God. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I'm going to use your gift as a rescuer, but I also need you to tap into this dependency of this speech, of this going before someone Mm -hmm. that you may be fearful of, of this people pleasing, of this whatever it is that you have. And so what happened when he spoke, when he began to speak, what happened? The. The seas begin to part. Things begin to take place. Water begin to spring up right. out, out, of, out of rocks right. and stuff. Like things begin to, man, and begin to cut. Like as he spoke, as he communed, as he depended on the Father, yep. comparison could it could not be, can it cannot exist because yep. of his dependence. Because he couldn't do it anyway. <laughs> he couldn't. And the last example that I want to give is um, Paul and Peter. Um, because I, when I heard Bill say this, it blew my mind because. Paul, I love Bill Johnson, y'all, by the way. Um, she don't have a, she didn't have Bill Johnson gear because she always, I do. she love us some Ooh, Bill. I love me some Bill. <laughs> Anyways, um, he said, um, Paul was a career Jew and yet God sent him to preach to the Gentiles. Peter was a career heathen and yet God sent him to preach to the Jews. Why? Dependency. It would have been easy for Paul to go and teach and say and show the scriptures and do all this. I'm Gamaliel, circumcised on the eighth day. and da, da, da. He had the full credentials of what um, would have been perceived as the perfect gift for him to do X. And yet God called him to do Y. If he had envied Peter because Peter was called to be the person that ministered to the Jews, then he would have never actually done what needed to be done to the Gentiles. He would have never actually been able to fulfill that and notice that the dependency was the most important part of it and so yeah yeah Yeah. (laughs) and and i think that's when a gift transitions to a calling Mm -hmm. everyone is gifted the gifts of god is uh, without repentance everyone is gifted but when it becomes a calling is when you have to depend on god Mm-hmm. You, you talk about Moses. Moses was gifted to rescue people, but his calling was to deliver the, the people of Israel. Yeah. And that's when he had to depend, be dependent on God. So I just love how both of y'all, 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 beautiful tag team, though. I'm not going to lie. Y'all was this beautiful tag team. <laughs> so I think that's how you do it from a calling, uh, from a gift to a calling is you have to uh, insert the dependence on God. Yeah. And, and, and yeah, it. What Peter was a fisherman, but yet God used to say, you'll be the fisher of men. You know, it, it breaks my heart because, you know, Judas obviously had a gift of, of math, of being, of, of math, you know, being mathematical. He understood money. He understood numbers, business. X, Y, and Z. He Standing understood business. business. It was actually business. Right? And yet he, um, he didn't, he never allowed it to, to become a calling. It, it was, it was, it, it was a gift, but because he never surrendered and because he probably always compared, he maybe was comparing himself to Matthew or comparing X, Y, and Z. Maybe he never felt like he was never qualified to be a part of the 12 disciples. I don't, I don't know. I wasn't with them, but when I look into the text, what, what I feel in my heart was there was something that he, there, he never got the root. He never got the healing. So therefore he never was able to walk fully into what God called him to do. And, and unfortunately he ended up, Betraying Jesus and then and then committing and then and then and then he you know committing suicide. So it's just all of that is just um, don't compare yourself because there's only one you. Just it's one you, and yeah. <laughs> so good. I have nothing to add. Y'all y'all said it all. I have nothing else to add. <laughs> so. I can't believe we're ready on our last question, but my last question to the both of y'all is why is it so important as Christians to be salt and light in the world? Because it was the last commandment that Jesus said. 
He said, make disciples of all nations. And when we don't do that, we are disobeying God and we're stopping people from all around the world. We, I think, I honestly think when people say, think about all nations, I think that we think about the backyard. We think about our community. We think about, there's, a, there's people that have never heard the gospel. There's mm-hmm. never, that doesn't even have a Bible, that doesn't have a Bible or, any, or a Bible in their translation. And, and when, we, when we're not being sought in light as, as believers, then we allow the darkness to arise in areas. And, and what, I mean, we see it all around. We see the darkness being more louder than the sought in light. Um, the, as believers, we see we see um, everything that we're supposed to be doing. We see the enemy doing it in a perverse way. Why is that? Because we are not walking um, in the in the fullness and the authority of being sought in light. It's important because people's lives are on the line. Not only people, not only salvation on the line, but but families are being held up. Um, breakthrough is being held up. Like Jesus can't. Jesus wants to come in and heal, do X, Y, and Z, but he wants to use. He he doesn't have to, but God sent His Son down. Um, to die on the cross for us, so that we can be vessels to continue out the mandate that he, that that Christ that Christ uh, shared in Matthew twenty eight. So I just um, I say that it's a must. It, 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 people are people are waiting. People are waiting for us to be sought in light. They are desperate. They're hungry. They're thirsty. And if, how would they know if someone never goes to tell them? How would they know? How would they know if no one ever comes to preach to them and share the gospel, share the good news? How would they know if so? If if you never rise up and be this, you know, our hoodie says 21st century Moses. How would how would they know if you never rise up and be the Moses for your family, be the Moses for your school, be the Moses for your business? It's so important because people are dying every day. People are um, stuck in trauma, stuck in addiction, stuck in, um, you know, drugs and, and just, just they're stuck in the cycle of flesh management because the believers are now are not um, waking up and being a salt and light. And, and if we and if we had a took a poll, we took a poll one time at one of our services and we realized that people that there that there was maybe if there was a crowd of let's say 80 people. I would say 10 out of those 80 people evangelized to somebody, shared the gospel, was salt and light in the area and 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 and, and brought people close to Jesus by sharing the, by actually using their words and spread, spreading the gospel. That's a really bad percentage. So I'm realizing that people don't even know how to be salt and light because they haven't even waken up to the fact that they they read it. The body of Christ reads it, but we're not seeing it lived out. We do see it lived out. I'm saying it's not happening, but I noticed that it's not being lived out the way that it should um, to be effective for us to be glory carriers in, in the in the atmosphere. Wow. Can you ask the question one more time? <laughs> say, like, say it one more time. I want to make sure I'm, I'm going to answer it. No, why is it so important as Christians to be sought and light in the world? That's what I thought. Okay. Uh, what? What's the question for two? I'm just playing. Because <laughs> um, you said so many good answers. I'm like, well, what am I going to do? Good answer, answer, good answer. <laughs> I don't watch so much Steve Harvey. <laughs> uh, no, um, yeah, I think. Um, Man, I'll just say it like this. God wants everybody back. He don't want nobody Mm. to perish. Mm. He don't want nobody to live separate from him. Mm -hmm. He wants no, that's not his desire for nobody. There's this, um, uh what you call it um interview that's going around going viral the ex satanic priest um who got saved and gave his life to Christ and when i look at somebody's story like that mm-hmm. i'm like yeah god want everybody saved mm-hmm. like even the person who's literally intention he signed up well i won't say he signed up because it was some things that happened to him as a child too. right but he made it his life's mm-hmm. business to work for the devil. Yeah. And God even wanted him saved. Like when you when you hear his salvation mm-hmm. story, he sent a young woman to go and to find him and to share the gospel with him. Like, so why is it important? Because God don't want nobody to perish. Mm-hmm. He want everybody saved. Mm-hmm. And I think it goes back to that eternal significance. Like we really think that 
is I, I've never shared the gospel with someone from the concept of trying to scare them out of hell. I've only tried to share the gospel with the fact that your father wants a relationship with you. That includes heaven. It excludes hell. But on this side, at this current moment, the active reality of you having a relationship with your father, your heavenly father changes your entire life. So you don't have to accept salvation and then wait for the um, gratification of that salvation when you die or when Jesus comes back. No, you experience the gratification of that salvation right now in being in right relationship with your heavenly father because every, nobody on this planet likes pain. Nobody on this planet actually desires to be hurt. That's why we have all these natural instincts that are protect that to protect ourselves and to this and to that. Our body has a natural instinct. What happens if our body gets something that it doesn't like or is going to harm our body? It throws it up. It poops it out. It's like, get this out of me because it's going to harm me. Our entire framework mm. was created That's good. for safety. And the only place there's safety truly is in the presence and in a relationship with God. And so why is it important? Because everybody's looking for something to get rid of their pain and a relationship with God through salvation in faith of Jesus Christ is the only answer and remedy. Even if their physical body may be going through some sort of pain, they have the hope, a confident hope that one their healer is with them yeah. and or two one day this won't be their end of you know th their suffering won't last forever or yeah. always so yeah. yeah so so good thank y'all for coming on to have this conversation with me uh, before we end it i want to just ask you what is your last advice and encouragement to everyone listening or watching the podcast yeah my advice to you because even as we were speaking like holy spirit i just really felt like just show me some of you who are going to be who are going to be listening, and you're going to be like, "Wow," and you're going to be um, you're gonna you're gonna feel like this, this um anointing to go back and be sought and light into your family, uh, specifically. I just feel like people who are watching is gonna realize like there's people in my family that are just that have been bland. They don't even they don't have salt. They don't the light has been dimmed. It's been distorted, and I believe that the Lord wants to use you to do that. So don't be afraid. You're not the savior. Jesus is the savior, but God wants to use you. He wants to equip you um, and empower you to go back and to be sought and enlightened to your family. I know that I know there's been some hard things that have happened in your life, hard things that happened in your family, but you cannot let that stop you from being sought and light because you may be the only sought and light that somebody would get to know before they leave this earth. You may be the only sought and light or opportunity to be sought and light to somebody we don't know when when tomorrow what tomorrow is going to bring, but what you what you do know is that you have the opportunity every single day to be the salt and light into the earth. And um, so I just want to encourage you with that. Um, whether that's family is family, whether that's people in your college dorms, whatever that is, whatever that looks like, or just a stranger, but just know that you 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 are equipped, you are loved, you yeah. are chosen, you are valued and worthy to be salt and light because Jesus said it. Yes. Because God literally gave his only son to die on the cross for you. He rose again so that you don't have so that you have to bore, bore the weight uh, of what you deserve. I just want to encourage you that you can extend that same invitation that Jesus extended to you to someone else. So that, that would be my my last advice. And um, know that, that he wants you. He yeah. wants you to be a part of his kingdom. He wants you to not only be a part of his kingdom assignment. Like you are, you are called to be a part of God's assignment and be a part of what he, his agenda is for, for, for heaven to be on earth. Mm -hmm. He wants and to partner with you. Not just in a pulpit. Not just in a pulpit. He wants to co-labor with you every day, every day of your life. And, and I believe that God wants to do that through you. So that would be my advice. Mm -hmm. uh, my advice would be to... Focus your prayer life around fellowship with God, not asking him to fix your problems. Mm -hmm. um, That's good. 
trust that he will fix everything that's wrong with your life. Mm -hmm. But again, you only get to see him in the earth when you know him. You only get to uh, the message translation of, I think it's second Peter or first period Peter. It says um, that I desire to mature in my experience of the master. Mm -hmm. And when you, spend your prayer life fellowshipping with God. You mature in your experience of mm -hmm. him. And what does that look like practically? That looks like less of you speaking and more of you listening. That looks like less of you telling God what you need and more of you asking God what he needs from you. That looks like less of you um, straight up complaining or worrying and more of you decreeing and declaring his goodness back to him. Um, I heard it taught by Joshua Giles. Um, it's a scripture that says um, to remind God of the things that he's, that he said he's going to do or something like that. And, and he said that the word there remind is not in a sense like God forgot, but it's more in a sense of like secretarial work, like how a secretary will come in and say, Hey, don't forget you have this appointment today or whatever. Or, Hey, don't forget, you know, we're going to do this. Like, so I would just say like, not more so of like, God fix this, do this, help this. Um, but asking him and reminding him about like who he has been in your life and um, also asking him to do that deep soul work in those moments where you have that time of fellowship with him because he will do it 1000%. And in that, um, you learning how to turn your prayer life into um, a fellowship with the Lord, it will steep you into um, being able to pray without ceasing because you'll always be able to be in fellowship with him. And that will take you being salt and light to a new level that will help you to understand. So, so it's, you're not trying hard, um, to not be this or to not be that because you're always fellowshipping with the Lord. You are the righteousness. What is the kingdom of God is not meat, bread and drink is righteousness, peace and joy. These are things that you have like consistent access to because you're not you're not in your prayer time or in your devotion time and then out of it. You're you're it's a it's a cyclical thing for you because you've mastered how to fellowship with um God even when things are hard, even when, you know, you're just going through your day. Um, but it starts in your own personal devotion time in fellowshipping with him that you're able to experience that outside of it. So, yes. Wow. So I don't know about everyone watching, but I know this has blessed me. If I'm the one who's blessed, I'll take it. This conversation has blessed me so much. So thank y'all so much for coming on. Um, for before we end the uh, episode, we want to get to know you a little bit better through a game called This or That. So I give you two options. I made my guesses, and we're going to see how I do. If I okay. did my IG stalking well enough, we'll see. <laughs> I never met them, but we'll see, all right? So I'll give you um, two options. It's going to be the same option for each of y'all, okay? So out of the – y'all ready? Yes. We're ready. Okay. So out of the two biblical characters, um, which one? Abraham or Moses? Moses. Abraham. Mo who wants to go okay. first? Getting us to the instructions. Coach, can no, you say that? Y'all can both say at the same time. Y'all can both say. So, Pastor Ray, you said you said Moses. Pastor Keith, you said Abraham. Abraham, right? Moses. Moses. Okay. That, what? What did we pick? Did you guess right? I'll tell you at the end. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> um, so, so between the two um, Christmas carols, which one would you pick? Oh, come you faithful, or joy to the world? Joy to the world. Joy to the world. Okay, okay. Um, early bird or night owl? Early bird. What? I don't. I don't think I'm a night owl. <laughs> yes, you are. He don't like to get up early. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm. I'm. Baby. I'm in between. Uh, I'll be up. Okay. She be up at five o'clock, six o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm in between. So night owl, then Pastor Trey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> night owl. <laughs> we be up, eyes wide, stretched, read and stuff, looking at stuff. TV, and I be I in the bed. Yeah, yeah, night out. <laughs> I guess that's funny. <laughs> uh, apples or oranges? Apples. Ooh. 
<laughs> Green apples for sure. Yeah, with some peanut okay. butter. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, go with the flow or planner. So I'm a planner by nature, but okay. I'm a go with the flower because um, She's spontaneous and God, risky. God be like, yeah, this the flow today. Yeah, and, and I'm gonna go with the flow. He's yes. Yeah, go with the flow. <laughs> <laughs> go with the flow. So Pastor Keys, you're a planner by nature. Yeah. So planner, oh, and then Pastor Trey, you are a go with the flow. Go with the flow. Yeah. <laughs> So, but yeah, he, so I got. He want a plan. He want to say, <laughs> "What's the plan? What's the plan? What's the plan?" <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so I got four out of five for both of y'all. Okay. Yeah. So I thought y'all were gonna say "Okami Faithful," but y'all both say "Joy to the World." Mm -hmm. I don't even know that one, man of God. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie to you. Joy me. to the World. I don't know "Okami Faithful." I, I I think it's a hymn. I know I learned it. Y'all don't come on "You Faithful." Oh, she come heard. let us adore him. Oh, come let us adore him. She oh, know it. come let us adore I mean, him. Know. Okay, well, if I had to pick knowing no, what it is, nah, I would pick, pick, pick Kung Yi Faithful. I didn't know that's what it was called. Since the act got me with the joy to the world, okay? You know? I don't like that. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is <laughs> amazing. <laughs> but yeah, I, I guess right. And maybe I got... Pastor Keys at five out of five, maybe. I don't know. But officially four out of five. <laughs> good job. Shout out to yes. you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you. I, I guess, but thank you. So <laughs> it was 50% chance I was gonna get it right or get it wrong. So <laughs> um, so before we end, I always ask my guests to uh, pray for us before we end the um conversation. So do you mind praying for us? Yes, sir. I definitely will. And your podcast is called Saturday Conversation, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, Lord, thank you so much for Edward um, and Saturday Conversations podcast, God. I thank you. One, I thank you for his heart, God, the heart that he carries, the passion that he carries, Father God, to reach your people, Father God, to hear people's testimonies, Father God, and bring in people from all around the world so that people's lives can be changed, God. As he's doing that, Lord, I ask you to change his life, Father God, in every area, Father God, everything that he's poured out, everything that he's, every seed that he's sown, Father God, Lord, will he see these seeds come back, Father God, to a harvest, Lord. Lord, I thank you, Father God, for covering him, God, in the blood of Jesus, God, as, he, as people's lives are getting changed change and getting set free father god through these interviews father god i know people i know i know people lives are being changed but i know the enemy does not like that lord so we won't give him no we won't give him no leeway father god we just cover and place a hedge of protection over ever right now father god of his family of his finances father god everything attached to him father god we say is off limits lord but i think that that even if it, even if this podcast touches one father god and then that one goes on and and um and, 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 and sets millions free, Father God. We know that it was the obedience of Everett, Father God. You, so, Lord, we thank you for his obedience. We thank you for his yes, Lord God. We thank you, for, Lord. We ask you to bless him, Father God. Um, and from the north, the south, the east, and the west, God, would you just bless him, Lord? I think that this is that the best is yet to come, Lord. He hasn't seen, he hasn't seen, eyes have not seen, Father God, ears have not heard, Father God, what you have in store for Everett, Lord. So I thank you that, I pray that his heart stays pure. His heart stays focused on you, Father God. And I thank you. I thank you for the refreshing that he would get in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And Father God, I just pray for every viewer yes, right Lord. now, Lord. I pray that um, as they take the things that they've heard today in mm -hmm. this conversation, yes, as they Lord. work them diligently into their lives, mm -hmm. that you would continue to help them, Holy Spirit. Yes, you would empower them to go beyond disciplines that they've mm -hmm. you know, not been able to do before, that you would empower them to make changes, yes, to live lives that are worthy of the election that mm -hmm. your word says in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, I pray, Father God, that as they hear these words or as they have heard these words, Lord, um, that that their minds would have um, the capacity to be able to receive revelation, wisdom, and understanding yes, beyond what we may have even expressed verbally, Lord. Mm -hmm. Would you take this revelation, Father God, and would you compound it for them? Would you make yes. it real for them, Father God? Would you take it just from knowledge and from wisdom to an experience, yes, Lord, Lord, to an experience that they're able to share, to an experience that they're able to live out, Lord, 
Lord, that your glory may be seen in the earth, that your glory may be revealed, Father God. I thank you, Lord, that every single area of personal revival that they have prayed for in their yes, own Lord. lives will come to a manifestation, mm -hmm. Father God, and your glory will spew from it like never before, yes, Lord. Lord. We honor you and we thank you for the spirit Jesus. of wisdom and understanding that continues to lead us and mm -hmm. guide us into all truths, even ones that we know not that we need. Mm -hmm. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank y'all so much. I'll pray for y'all real quick and we end the episode. Um, Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you for your son and your daughter. We thank you for how you're using them to build your kingdom. We thank you for allowing them to be salt and lights wherever that wherever they're at. We ask you, O oh Lord, that you continue to be with them. We ask you that you continue to favor them. We ask you that you continue to provide for them. We ask you that that you continue to protect them. And in my name of Jesus, we ask you, Lord, when they ever feel tempted to put their head down, we ask you, Lord, that you be the lifter of their head in my name of Jesus Christ. I pray that whatever they touch, let it prosper in my name of Jesus Christ. Wherever they go, let your blessings precede them in my name of Jesus Christ. I pray that goodness and mercy shall follow them all the days of their lives in my name of Jesus. I pray that they continue to be a light wherever they are wherever they're at. I pray that it continue to be sought wherever they're at in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I thank God um, for your um, for their ministry. Um, Revelations 12, 11, we thank you for what you're doing. We, we are um, expecting that this is just the beginning of what you're going to do. Revelations 12, 11 was the foundation of what you're going to do, but we thank you because we know that you're faithful to see it to completion. We love you. We honor you. We ask you, Lord, that you just continue to be with them, continue to anoint them, continue, continue to fill them up with your spirit. We honor you. We say, blessed be your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. So thank y'all for tuning in to episode 70 to Saturday com of Saturday Conversations. Um, Pastor Trey, Pastor Keys, where can people find you? Yes, you can follow us on uh, our, uh, our ministry page on Instagram at Revelation 1211 Ministries. Um, yes, yeah. and that's 1211 12, with 11. no One, two, one, one. Yes. You can also um, download our app in the Android and iOS app store, mm -hmm. Revelation 1211 Ministries, again, with no colon. And then above all else, coming up, you can get your tickets yes. for our upcoming conference, Bringing Back the Ark. Mm -hmm. If what we just talked about made you say, I need more of that. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> bringing Back the Ark is the place for you, okay? We are bringing the people that yeah. have helped us um, gather and realize everything that we have been sharing with you guys. Mm -hmm. We're bringing them all together. Yeah. It'll be about four to five different speakers coming mm -hmm. from all over the nation yeah. that are going to teach the kingdom yeah. like nobody's business. Yeah. February 28th through March 2nd in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. And if you head over to our Instagram or to our app, you can um, just look right mm -hmm. there. It's either going to be on the top of our Instagram or at the top of our app. And that's yeah. where you can get your tickets. Yeah, we can't wait to see you there. Listen, where we talk about being sought and light, God's called you to be a glory carrier. We're going to equip you on how to actually do yeah. that um, and experience his glory, walk with his glory, have unbroken fellowship with him every single day, meaning there's no interruption with your relationship with Christ. Not sin, not flesh, nothing stops you from having that fellowship. And we're excited for you to learn um, all about that at Bringing Back the Art Conference coming up February 28th through March 2nd. Amazing. I'll put all the links in the description box below. Once again, thank y'all for taking time out of your busy schedule. Thank y'all for showing up and having an almost two hour conversation with me for, for the people listening. Um, it was a free flowing conversation. So I was so glad that we were able to have this conversation. I'm grateful to know y'all. I'm grateful to call you brother and sister in Christ. And whenever I'm in North Carolina, I'll let y'all know. I don't know where I'm going to yeah. go, but I'll yeah, let you know. <laughs> Yeah, email me your number so we can stop waiting for emails. You know, we can just hit each other up. And stay, for stay sure. In <laughs> and whenever you're in Chicago, y'all in Chicago, let me know, okay? We will. Gotcha. We will. I love you, brother. You have a good one. No problem. And one more second. Um, if you haven't, if you want to join the conversation, join the conversation in the comment section below. Tell us what part of the conversation stood out to you. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification if you're watching on YouTube. And if you're listening on Spotify or Apple, Apple Podcasts, Follow, hit the notification bell, and give us five stars. Because you know this conversation is worth a million stars, but you can only give us five. So give us five stars. <laughs> New conversations come out on Saturdays, but this is the last episode of the year 2023. So you know I have to end it 
with fire. You know, I had to bring the uh, the heavy hitters, and so I brought Pastor Trey and Pastor Keej Elliott for this episode. Um, but look out for new episodes for of conversa- com- Saturday conversations in the year 2024. If you have any prayer requests, put in the comment section below. We love you. God bless you, and I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching this video. If you want more content, subscribe over here and watch the next video over there. God bless you.